Hello and welcome! Today we will make this marvelous steampunk top hat that doesn't even fit in the frame. For this project you will need cardboard, acrylic glue or mod podge, wood fabric or another material of your choice, 2mm EVA foam, 5mm EVA foam, contact cement, a heat gun, transparent plastic from packing material or similar, acrylic paint, a pencil, old newspapers, masking tape, a weird looking ruler, sandpaper or a carving tool, and finally foam clay and quick seal, which are not obligatory but great if you already have them. To calculate the size of your top hat, it is unfortunately necessary to perform a little math. I know I don't agree with this either, but it is of the essence for this project. Measure your head circumference and to discover the radius of your head, divide that by 6.28. Your head is not round, but rather oval shaped. So consider that when drawing your pattern. I made a circle with my radius and then I took a little from the sides and added to the front and back. How much? Around one inch on each side. Then I cut it off to test it and see if it fits correctly so I could trace it again to trace my brim. The brim is two and a half inches wide all around and don't forget to mark the front, back and side notches so you can assemble everything correctly later on. To make the crown measure again just to make sure everything is matching and cut a rectangle in the exact circumference you need by the height that you want. My top hat is 20 centimeters tall but you are free to make this bigger or smaller depending on the occasion and your needs to make other aristocrats jealous. By analyzing the anatomy of a top hat you will know Notice that the most interesting ones are the curvy ones. To achieve that look, mark the front, back and side notches on your crown. On the side notch, remove one inch from the height and draw a curve up to the front notch. Repeat on the other side. Fold your crown pattern in four and cut the curve so you have a symmetrical pattern. Now it's time to cut your cardboard and fashion material. On cardboard, you will need one brim, one crown and one top with no allowances. <laughs> Just sometimes, sometimes, no, no, no. Take a glass bottle or some other hard cylinder and roll your crown from both sides so it's able to do amazing waves. Tape the ends together and remove any excess you might have. Secure that seam with a lot of masking tape from in and out and repeat the rolling process on the brim so you can attach it to the crown. This is just a preliminary attachment so you can see if it fits. Take it apart again. It's time to work on the outside material. I had to prepare my outside material before cutting. Here I have the wood fabric I used on my Bobby Duke inspired dress and I am turning it all red. So red paint it is. I water it down a little bit so I don't lose the woo details. Then we need to cut two brims, one crown and one top, all with wide seam allowances. Very important. I didn't measure here but I left almost one inch on everything. Or should we call that a glue allowance? Apply an obscene amount of acrylic glue or mod podge to your outside material and spread it using a brush. Do the same to the cardboard and glue those pieces together. I use the same method on the brim and the crown. After your brim has dried a little, cut the edges of the glue allowance so you can fold it in. Secure it with masking tape and allow it to dry a little more before gluing the under brim layer. I am making cuts in a 90 degree angle to the brim edge and then I am removing little triangles of fabric with a small sharp scissor so my curves are beautiful and I don't have any excess fabric overlapping. Mark where the front is on the outside as well as your front back and side notches before gluing the other layer otherwise you will not be able to see them anymore. Here I am sandwiching the glued ring between two dining sets and putting it under a heavy ABBA book so the drying process is not disturbed by excess glue that I might have used or any angry cats in my household. Yes, Muesli, I am talking to you. <laughs> Finish the back seam on the crown and try desperately to attach the top only to realize should have added the top of the top head first but now it's too late so <laughs> if you chose not to be stupid like I was attach the top to the crown before adding the fabric to the outside if you like me forgot about this tiny detail the solution I propose is the following tape the glue allowance with a few pieces of masking tape from the outside so you can add a lot of tape from the inside I guess it could be time for the glue gun here but I didn't feel like burning my fingers that day. Remove the tape on the outside. Wait for all of it to dry for a few days and cut out any excesses. Now it's time to attach the brim to the crown. Cut again 90 degree angles on the inside glue allowance of the brim and the bottom allowance of the crown. Here there is no need to cut the triangles out of any of them. Start with the glue allowance of the crown by spreading some glue and folding the pieces to the inside so you have a beautiful finish. Then place your brim on top of that, making sure your front, back and side notches are aligned and do the same with the inside 
inside glue allowance, securing them both with glue and masking tape from the inside only. For an extra hold, add a sweatband to your top hat on the inside. Here I cut a 2 inch wide strip of blue fabric that I glue to the inside circumference and cut out any excesses that were peeping out. And voila! After this intense workout, you have an epic and curvy top hat as it should be. But why stop here if you can go overboard with details? I made this to go with my steampunk lumberjack costume and so I decided we needed goggles. Goggles? Start by cutting a rectangle 23 by 8 centimeters. Fold it in half and cut a curve like this so you have a diagonal cylinder that will fit on your top hat. This is your base pattern. Cut two of those in 5 mm foam, two strips 25 by 3 centimeters on 2 mm foam and for the details two of those squiggly things also on 2 mm foam. Using contact cement, glue the side seams together so you have your cylinders and trace the round shape so you can cut two pieces on 2 mm foam and two pieces on 5 mm foam. I also added some spare screws and bolts that I had saved from the Viking helmet I made for Steve the husband. Link in the description for those of you curious how I made it. Using something round, trace a circle and cut the middle out to form the hole for the glass and attach the 2 mm circle to the cylinder using contact cement. For the glass I am using an old package I found in my recycling bin and I am cutting a rough round shape a little smaller than the base circle. Attach it with contact cement on both sides and then add the 2 mm foam circle on top of that for a pretty finish. Ta-da! You have now goggles you can actually see through. Isn't that amazing? Add your strip of foam first and then start adding your other details such as the screws, bolts and squiggly things. So I added some more details off camera and now I have just to dremel these down and make them look pretty and then I can prime it and paint it so I can add the strips to oh my nails Ugh. so I can add the strips to put them together and finally add them to the top hat one eternity later I sanded the details down here to make it more round. I closed a little bit of the gaps with quick seal and I closed the under gap with foam clay. Now I just need to wait for this all to dry. Another eternity later. In the end, I decided not to prime the foam before painting first due to laziness and dangerous behavior from my part, but also because since these goggles are just there to make the hat prettier, I didn't see much sense in wasting my very expensive foam primers here. Then I did a very terrible job staying in frame during this process. For informational purposes, I painted three layers of black acrylic paint, then I added a few layers of copper spray paint for shimmer and details, and then another layer of black on top of that to bring out the shadows. So I got these from downstairs and as you can see the paint didn't really stick to it because well I didn't prime it and I forgot to heat seal it so this is what happened kids don't forget to heat seal it well I don't think not only the paint did not really stick but I think I used silver instead of copper because the can was right next to the copper on the fart sucker 2000 downstairs it's okay it wouldn't be my project if it wouldn't be full with mistakes Let's not call them mistakes, shall we? Let's call them variations or design choices. At the end, I dry brushed a little black on the screws to make them pop out more and give the goggles a distressed look. Cookies! Now it's finally time to attach them to one another by adding a tiny strip of wood fabric between the two cylinders with contact cement. Here, I painted the wood fabric black for more effect. I cut a one inch wide strip of black wood fabric to play as a headband. To attach the goggles to the top hat, I first marked with a pen where they should sit forever. Then I added contact cement and held them there for a few seconds until they were secure enough. Regarding the headband, also attaching it with contact cement and adding one screw to the side for effect. Then I added screws to the top part of the crown, got contact cement on my hair, ew, 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 ew. which required some chopping off. Then I painted the screws black and dry brushed some copper paint for effect. Isn't it pretty? Now that we are done with our goggles, it's time to work on our mighty spider. I am excited and scared at the same time. Although I don't really mind spiders, nor am I actually scared of them, I have to admit I am somewhat intimidated by the bigger ones and oh boy, this is a huge one. I will now make a black widow out of foam. For that I need something round for the butt. I made a newspaper ball that was big enough to meet my arachnid requirements. You need to cover it in duct tape and cut it in half. Remove the inside paper so you are left only with a shell and cut that in four pieces so you have your bum pattern. Just a tiny disclaimer here. Where did this go? No. 
Oh my god. Learn from my mistakes. You have to write the number of the pieces on the pieces. So I just took the other half, numbered the pieces and cut them apart. Traced them onto 5mm foam, cut and glue them together with contact cement. You want this to be curved, so be prepared to use some brute force on this foam to make it obey your commands. Don't be shy and have no mercy. We have a beauty! Look at that! To create the body, just repeat the same procedure, but cut it in two pieces only instead of four. This will be its little body. Look at that. Wait for that to dry before attaching them to each other. I traced both pieces on 2mm foam to create a bottom. By this point, I was kinda losing it already. This is how I look when I'm crafting. Like I've given up on life. Look at my hair. <sighs> I have the bum, I have the body, a odd shape, it's not round. I will send all of these parts now and I will glue them together so I can figure out a way to make legs. I'll be right back. Then I removed a little piece from the bun in order to insert the body inside of that. I glued that together with contact cement and I closed the gaps with some foam clay. I also created the pincers out of foam clay. It's a simple shape. I made a ball, crushed it, cut it to form the pincers and glued them to the bottom of the body after it dried. Now we have the pincers attached and I will cut the legs with foam because I don't have any wires so I will have to make it work like this. <laughs> Cut four big legs and four small legs all in five millimeter foam. Leg number one is kind of stable and I will file it so it's a little bit rounder. Now it was time to sand everything once more using my rotary tool. And now this is the sanded spider and the legs are legs. Look, I made them a little bit round on the edges and they're looking okay. Now I just need to attach them. But first, let's not make the same mistake as we did with the goggles, shall we? Let's hit seal that foam first. Just don't do it as I did. <laughs> don't do this. That thing gets really hot and I burned my fingers, so avoiding the glue gun before led to nothing. Nothing! Close the gaps with quick seal. Well, this will require several applications, I can see it already. After my viking helmet failure, I learned that only a little bit of that goo in your finger is sufficient to get the job done, so no need to overflow the piece with a lot of it, you know? <laughs> to attach the leg, add some contact cement to this part over here and to the division between the body and the bum of the spider. You need to put two long legs facing forward, the four smaller legs facing the sides, forming a sort of X, and the remaining two big legs facing backwards. The final result is very creepy. Extremely creepy. Ew! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Go home, spider. You're drunk. To make it even creepier, let's paint it black. I used three coats of paint and since I heat sealed it this time, the paint stayed forever. <laughs> Magic! Eww! <laughs> it is kind of scary. I will not lie. Imagine this coming towards you. Yeah. Once dried, attach to the hat. Again, contact cement, hold it in the chosen position for a few seconds and add the missing details. I wanted a mechanical look, so I added screws for the eyes and all the big leg joints to achieve that. Dry brushing some copper paint for dimension and adding the famous red marking on the Black Widow bump. Because my acrylic paints are very cheap, this required several coats to look decent. Then I covered the hat in plastic and went outside for a final spray of copper to add a little shimmer. Oh, the tables have turned. <laughs> yes, I will open the door. Yeah, I know. No, I told you to be outside. Zushi, lasting rule. What do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> and it's time for the reveal. Ha ha ha.
This is the final result of weeks of insanity. Pure insanity. I like this hat so much that I might even use it for mundane things such as grocery shopping or just like for a walk with sushi. Yes, I will. I think I might even start using all my insane costumes on a daily basis as soon as we are allowed to go out as normal people again. Although it doesn't seem like it, this is a relatively easy DIY and you can even make the spider and the goggles out of cardboard or paper mache. I will not deny that it is time consuming with all of the drying at all, but it is fun and I recommend trying. What do you think? If you want to see the full costume, I will leave the link to the video in the description and if you like sewing shenanigans and crazy fashion projects, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next week. Bye!